Hello miners, Rusty coming at you, another knife review. Tonight's a special one, we're going to take a peek at a Queen Warncliffe. This is in the Saw Cup Bone Series, and it's got uh, model number QN010. Stick with me until the end, and we'll learn a little bit about the history of some blades and so on. Uh, so this one, oh, you get move in a little bit more under the light. As I mentioned... Uh, comes in the queen saw cup bone. So we're taking a peek at it here. Got the queen shield on mine. It's a little bit wonky, in my opinion. Should be sitting about there, but maybe I'm wrong. Nice transitions. Love the color change uh, in the bone. And it's very smooth all the way around. We have very nice spring brass liners, double threaded bolsters, they're nickel silver, double threaded on this one. And this is what it's looking like on the other side. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, do have a place for a lanyard hole. And it has this little swoopity thing in here. Like I said, it's a popular knife. I think Rough Rider does one about the same size uh, called like the Quill Cliff, something like that in the Rough Rider Reserve. So when we open it up, it does have, you can watch videos on these and they all seem to have a pretty stout pull. If I st <laughs> Excuse me. By stout, I mean, oh, Good goodness, guys. Sorry about that. I mean about a seven. Uh, but that's a, this is a, probably like the original Warncliffe. And I'll tell you about that at the end here. We got the Queen logo uh, stamped in the tang. And we should be looking at the model number here and China. So the ergos on this knife are going to be good. Come in here. It fits fits your hand real nicely like so. And if I go and I close this, we do have a half stop. And we have a snap. So that's that's nice. Uh, okay, we'll take it open. Don't remember if I cleaned this out or not, but it did kind of come, comes pretty clean. So let's talk about this knife and the history, if you will. So, actually while I was looking at the Stockmans, uh, and we've, I learned that they have something called a coping blade. And I did a little research and I came across an article which talks about the history of the Warncliffe blade. So, I read up on it. And it says here, in the year about 1820 or thereabouts, and this is from Knife Depot Blogs, uh, let's see, James, the Lord of Warncliffe, James Archibald Stewart hyphen Wortley hyphen Mackenzie was having dinner with his relative, Archdean Colbert in Britain. And this Lord Warncliffe guy happened to be a customer of Joseph Rogers and Son Cutlers and they were the cutlers to the majesties. And they are the most important figures in the famed Sheffield cutlery uh, industry. So he presented the pattern to, I want to say, I'm not sure if Lord Warncliffe came up with this or if the Joseph Rogers. But take a look at these knives. They were called spring knives back then. And see if we can get that. You guys can see the similarities. So that's why I'm calling this knife fit for a king. And we'll kind of stop on that. If you want to stick around just a little bit longer, I'll show you some different things here. So we all know what a sheep's foot looks like. Oh, let's get in and see if I can get this. Okay, there's your Warncliffe. And in this guy's opinion, a Warncliffe does not have to have a light curve. 
So if it does have a curve, he's not going to disqualify it from a one cliff. And I tend to believe. I'll kind of go along with that. Then there's what the sheep's foot looks like. This one would be called a lamb's foot. And then finally, this is what they call your coping blade. I think we call them reverse tontos. So very similar to a sheep's foot, but it just has this, you know, a sheep's foot comes down a little more and this one points out. So we're just gonna wrap this up right here. Give you guys a closer look at the Queen Warncliffe. And I'll tell you, this is a step above the Rough Riders. Thanks for tuning in.